three. All right, we're live. Hi, everybody. It's Chris from Books and Chris. We're here. It's the Romance Book Squad. Minus one. We're missing Natasha today. Um, we have a wonderful author joining us today. I'm going to bring her up right now. And there Hi. is Nalini. Hi, Nalini. Hi. <laughs> welcome, welcome. She's joining us all the way from New Zealand, right? Yes, I am. Thanks for inviting me. This should be fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. We've, we're, yeah. we're really excited to have you. Um, so my name's Christina. I, this is my channel, Books and Chris. Um, I've been a part of Insta, what is it, Bookstagram for about a year mm -hmm. now. And we've all started this uh, this romance book club, and we've become really good friends. And we've had a couple of different authors on here. We've done a couple of different readathons. We started with Julia Quinn in the Bridgerton series, and we moved on. And uh, it was historical romance, and we did the whole historical thing. And now we're go we're diving into the paranormal romance, and we saw so much happening with the side changeling. I had never read the side changeling, and me and Alicia spoke, and I'm like. We need to touch Nalini Singh, but I, I want to do a different, a different um, one of her series. Let's do the Archangels, the Guild Hunter series. So that's so we did, and we got a couple of people here. We got a couple. We got a good amount of people turning out. So uh, I'm gonna pass it over to Carrie. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Carrie. I'm with Book for Romance, and I am so excited right now to talk to you, Nalini. I'm like. I had I I ended up this was a reread for me. So I read your books maybe eight months ago. So I'm very mm -hmm. excited to chat with you and yeah, excited to be here. <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> Yay. Um I'm Alicia, at least underscore reads. I read the side changeling series, but had not read Guild Hunter. So when we decided to do this, I was super excited. Because I think it's always fun to read a book and talk to other people about it, especially because it feels like sometimes reading can be a very like lonely experience. Right. But with this, it's been so great. We've been able to talk to everybody, kind of decide and to pick apart the books a little bit, decide where our favorite characters are. Um, and I have really, really, really enjoyed the Guild Hunters. I love the side changeling though. So like I do have some questions to go with that one, if that's okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm yours today, so. <laughs> okay. And we really, we really appreciate it. Because what time is it for you? Because you're. It's actually fine. It... It's noon, noon on a Monday. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, okay. Monday. Okay. Yeah. She's a whole so day ahead of you. you. Right. We're not getting you <laughs> tonight. Awesome. Okay, Tori. Hi, I'm Tori. I have a YouTube channel and I have a bookstagram. Um, this is actually my first time reading any of your books in particular, and I'm super excited to be able to talk to you. I'm like, I'm a huge fan of just like the six books that we've read. I've loved them. So I can't wait to see the questions that we have for you and what people post. And yeah, nice to meet you, Tori. <laughs> so Nalini, I was uh, doing some research about you. I saw that you were born in Fiji. Um, mm -hmm. You've traveled all over the world. I actually um, did a little bit of research and I counted a approximately 19 countries from your travel page, which I thought was fascinating and how lucky you must feel to be able to do that. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, if anybody wants to like guess, I don't know, in, in the in the chat box of some countries that she's, she's visited, I have a list here, but Nalini, if you want to talk about that, I think that was like super, super interesting. Um, yeah, so I, I think part of that comes from being growing up on an island, right? Mm -hmm. So unlike you guys in the U.S., you know, you're connected to multiple countries and your own country is so huge. So I was born on a very small island. So the population of Fiji is under a million for like oh, wow. all of it, um, all the all the islands put together. And then I moved to New Zealand and um, I think our current population is five million. So, you know, it's, it's small countries. And then yeah it's just normal here to to sort of be like okay it's called the oe so after you finish school or after you finish university um you head off overseas for your overseas experience wow. <laughs> so it's just sort of built into the, the culture and um i think all my friends have done it like they've gone off and traveled and seen the world and and for me it started quite young because obviously i moved from fiji to new zealand and then when I was in high school, I was on a Japanese exchange trip. So I wow. went over there with, with my classmates. 
had so much fun. Like, just imagine a bunch of 15 and 16 year olds. Wow. After <laughs> right. the chaperones go to sleep, you know. <laughs> 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 that was good fun. And then, um, and yeah, and then I've just had the travel bug and just really, really enjoy going to new places. And being a writer has really opened up the world for me as well because. Um, my books have gone to so many places in the world and then readers have wanted me to come and so it's it's like right. a really good excuse for me to yeah. travel as well so I've loved, <laughs> I've loved that I've loved being able to do you know uh, events in the US um, I've done events in Canada um, in Germany and France and it's just um, yeah I just you know um, I hope someday you know when we get back to normal hopefully that I can <laughs> start doing that again yeah. but I also like doing just off like off the map travel a little bit going to countries that maybe necessarily aren't on like everyone's sort of bucket list bucket list kind of <laughs> thing you know because there's so many astonishing places to go to and um a few years ago I decided just I would just pick a random place and go and so <laughs> in the globe and just yeah explore. in the globe yeah. basically yeah that's so, awesome um and so that's that was really fun and um yeah i look forward to continuing that when when i can awesome yeah so i'm just gonna let the girls know in case they didn't check it out um, i'm gonna name some of these places where you've been because i just thought it was fascinating so hong kong sydney india ireland germany new zealand Australia, Malaysia, Japan, China, Czech, Hungary, Poland, Switzerland, Italy, Paris, and Antarctica. Those are just, I'm sure, a few. Because, oh, wow. and the United States and Canada, right? So mm -hmm. that's amazing. <laughs> Did you collect anything from like these places? Like I would have like collected like a mm -hmm. t-shirt or something like really cool. <laughs> I, I did. Or a pen so since you write. <laughs> well, so the thing is, I, I did something actually quite unintentionally clever. Um, so my first big trip um, as an adult was um, actually to the States. So, and um, I I did this crazy thing. I, I, I took a train from Amtrak from um, San Francisco to New York. Wow. So, yeah, I've, I've crossed the, the US on the train. It's fantastic. It's good fun. But <laughs> just be prepared for things to break down and all kinds of oh, I'm sure. disasters. But it's it's fantastic. But one thing I did was I started picking up magnets oh. in cities. And it's really Ooh. small. It's a small thing. And, um, and it's really portable. And it's really easy to click. So, like, if you move, you know, a box of magnets is not going to be a big mm -hmm. thing to take with you. So that was just something I did just by accident. And then it became a thing because I thought, oh, this is kind of cool. So you should see my fridge. My fridge, when someone comes to visit, is oh. like a focal point. They walk in and they go, whoa. <laughs> because, That's because so I, cool. It, yeah, it's fun. And also, um, it becomes like a thing to find a really unique magnet in a place. Right. right? Like, mm -hmm. So I have like, I am one of my favorite magnets, I think it's from somewhere in um, Austria. And it's this little little girl swinging, like it's a little swing. It's just cute, you know. And she's in the full like traditional costume. That's and... like when you go to Disney and you go, you walk into those souvenirs. You don't know what mm -hmm. to because they have like yeah, yeah, millions so of many. magnets, mm -hmm. millions of pens, so many <laughs> mugs. But it's fun. Mm -hmm. it's fun. So that's it really is, cool. It's really fun. So I have a question for you. What are the odds that you'll come to like a, a polycon or like a romance <laughs> convention so we can maybe see you and get some book site? I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there because I know New Zealand's very far away from the U.S. No, I used to do U.S. conventions a lot. Actually, mentioning Apollocon, I was actually meant to be like the guest of honor at Apollocon in 2020. Oh, um, so yeah. So obviously that was the, that was cancelled, and um, at, at the moment it's travel out of New Zealand and back into New Zealand is too difficult for me to to make it. Right. So, mm -hmm. but um, Jennifer, who um, you know, Armin Trout, who right. Uh, uh, runs a Polycon has been very nice and they've just pushed the invitation out until you know we're in a Things position where, it, where it's possible yeah right so yeah I, I would so definitely not out love of the to question. do that yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I used to I've actually done quite a few um you know romantic times did you guys ever go mm -hmm. to one of those yeah no yeah, yeah yeah so that was when they were being held quite regularly and um so I've done a few of those at 
it's so much fun yeah i would definitely love to to come again so do you feel that the like the pandemic that we all thought was going away but it's apparently still happening um has creatively stifled you or has opened everything up because you know some writers have said the pandemic has been the worst thing that has ever happened to my writing because i'm trapped in my house have you felt that way or have you felt like this has given you a new appreciation for your writing um actually for me i when i write i tend to quite isolate myself anyway so mm. that for me is is not um like a big change I, I actually really like i'm quite i suppose an introvert in that way when i write i like it to be very quiet and i turn off the wi-fi and everything you know the phone text messaging is off and i'm just in my quiet oh, wow. space so that and, and and also writing for me has always been like the place i go to for comfort and it actually has always helped me with my mental health like mm -hmm. so you know when you get really really angry and you want to give someone a really bad email reply or something so i just like type it all out and it's all out there and then i'm i'm totally calm and then i can actually think and um so yeah for me writing has always been that sort of safe place to go and so i feel really lucky in that way and um so yeah it's it it hasn't altered my writing in that way but i think mm -hmm. what has affected is that low level tension that I think exists in all of us um, mm -hmm. because you never know whether what's going to change whether it's mm -hmm. going to be good news or it's going to be mm -hmm. bad news or just everything nothing is settled and I think mm -hmm. that has affected me and I think it's affected you know all of us to one yeah. extent or right. another yeah right. yeah so since we all read the guild hunter we, we read one through six for the past six weeks. So let's kind of dive into some of our questions that we, or do you want to do like general overall? Because I know we had a bunch of questions in the Discord about kind of like somebody asked, what was your writing process? How do you stay motivated and creative? Because um, these books are hella creative. You're going from, you've got the side changeling with this right. race of unfeeling to shifters. And then in this one, you've got archangels, angels, vampires, humans. It's, it's lions and tigers and bears oh my so <laughs> how do you stay motivated and creative because both of these are very long series that right. you've created they're very in, intricate world how do you mm -hmm. keep that going um so i think at the core of it it comes from the love of both series and both worlds like i'm really invested in them and i just it is a labor of love you know, right. it's, it's, mm -hmm. when I started writing uh, the side changing series, like paranormal was on the downward trend. That's what everyone was saying. And yet I still mm -hmm. wrote it because I was just obsessed with the story. And that was the story I was going to write. It didn't right. matter what people were saying was selling or not. And so, um, and with the guild hunters, I was like, this is really weird. Archangels mm -hmm. and vampires, and, but I'm just <laughs> going to go with it. It's really awesome. weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's both of them have come from passion. They're passion projects. And to this day, mm -hmm. they are passion projects. And I think that's really where the motivation yeah. comes from. Like I am excited to see what happens to the characters next and to the world next. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you guys are part of my newsletter, but I do free short stories for my subscribers mm -hmm. and they're kind of slices of life. And that again I do because I want to know what everyone is up to. Mm -hmm. right. so, a, a lot of, you know, at the heart of it, that's where it comes from. But the other thing I was going to say is I've become, so next year is, I think, um, the 20th anniversary of the day I sold my very first book to a publisher. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. But I was going to say over the long term, I realized it's really important to have other creative things in my life as well that right. inspire me. So... I, you know, I still read a lot. So I think it's oh, really okay. important. And I, I, I garden, or like I to do stuff with plants because that's really creative as well. Like mm -hmm. um, doing planty stuff, just anything that sort of um, feeds that creative part of me, I think is really important. Um, yeah, but particularly reading because I think that's where I came from as a writer. I came from a love of reading. And so, so I never want to lose that. I want to constantly be reading new material and, you know, finding new authors. <laughs> and, yeah. 
I have a question now because you said reading. So yeah. who do you like to read? What's your favorite? <laughs> <question>? <laughs> Not you. Wonder. Like, do you Nalini? like the smut Nalini? Do you like thriller? <laughs> are you a historical girl, or are you like a little smut, a little historical, a little mystery? Like, <laughs> well, I, I am really eclectic. I have to say. So, um, there's a big story behind this. So, like most readers, I've had my my binges. You know, like where a certain period I just read historical, and then I just read paranormals, and I just read right. you know. But these days, I'm really like eclectic, and part of that is um. So I was like a reverse book snob, right, for a while. So I did I, I did English literature at uni and okay. I, I really enjoyed it. But then I, I got really mad at how um, genre fiction was kind of, you know, looked down on a little bit and mm -hmm. just in general. Um, again, the and New Zealand, the New Zealand literary scene is very literary and uh, and back then, you know, genre was just not mentioned. So I would just read genre. Like, I would not read any literary stuff. Um, that was my little protest. And then I, um, when I was in Japan, one weekend, I ran out of books to read. And this is before ebooks. And oh, man. so I, like, had no books. And, like, Did you I pick up the, manga? Yeah, like, <laughs> no, but it's all in Japanese, right? So I'm in rural Japan. And I, I, I had, you know, I can speak Japanese, but not enough to read, like, a novel. Right. And um, so I was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And I think it was like a long weekend. Yeah. Well. So the girl who had had the apartment before me had left a box of books because she was an English speaker as well. And she knew oh. I was coming in another English speaker. So she but her taste was completely different from mine, like completely. Right. <laughs> but I was desperate. So I'm like, OK, well, I guess I'm going in. And <laughs> I read all kinds of stuff. There was the literary stuff in there. There was genres I didn't read in there. And it really kind of started my my shift in how I look at reading. And, mm -hmm. and then um, I've also worked in the libraries. And if you ever work in a library, you'll realize that books just constantly come across. And you're like, oh, this looks interesting. Oh, this looks interesting. And right. Then mm -hmm. Before you know it, you're reading all kinds of stuff. So now I'm really open in what I read. Um, mm -hmm. Just some recent in general i tend to like quite heavy world building um because i, I suppose that's what i like anyway right. that's what i write um and so i read a lot of science fiction um uh and fantasy right. and um one of the recent authors i've really fallen in love with is martha wells the murderbot diaries i don't know hmm. if you've read that it's no it. it's very good it's like I'm looking it up robot <laughs> He's a security robot and he's meant to be murder bot. You know, he's meant to be really scary and everything. But really, all he wants to do is for the humans to leave him alone so he can watch his drama serials that he's addicted to. Wow. And it's just, it's it's so human, even though he's not human at all, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, a, another writer in that area, the science fiction fantasy that I really love is, is P. Jelly Clark. And he writes mm -hmm. like, fantasy um set in like 1920s cairo which is, oh. is magic and it's it's fascinating interesting um, yeah and have uh, you heard of the ice planet barbarians <laughs> <laughs> i've read a couple of those books i think they're fun they're really are they great they're so fun <laughs> that's what i said i read everything you know very and, awesome um, I've read all of the the big historical and contemporary, like you know the 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 ones who've been around for a while. I've read everyone, yeah. like um, Brandon Sanderson and all the big names too. Yeah, Colleen Hoover maybe. Right. I actually have not read Colleen because oh. I think it seems to me her books are very intense, and I right. just haven't been in the right frame of mind to to, to to have my heart ripped out and. Oh, that's there's so and it's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I have, like, I have her books. I bought them, and so I just keep a stash of books. So when I, you know, when Get I'm in the mood, mood. yeah, I'll be like in there, and um, and then I like really light stuff as well. Like I really love um, Lucy Parker. She's a another mm -hmm. New Zealander, and she writes. She wrote this entire series set in the London theatre world. Um, and she writes these wonderful grumpy heroes. Um, oh. And then it's, it's, you know, they're kind of, and the heroine is not at all what they're expecting. And I'm I just um, in the middle of her I next release. 
<laughs> which is called Battle Royal. It's about um, two cake makers and they're battling to make the cake for a royal wedding. And it's, it's fun, you know, it's another grumpy hero and he's, you know, he's very Mr. Darcy-esque. And, oh, we uh, love Darcy, yeah, Mr. Yeah, Darcy. Yeah. I could talk about books forever, so. I'll just oh, we love it. <laughs> we're, all, we're all taking notes. This is what we do. I know, we're all like, you're right right <laughs> I'll throw out some of some more while you're doing that. So yes. Sonali Dev, I love Sonali's books. Um, they're just so lush and so emotional. Um, she's currently doing a series for retellings of Jane Austen. Oh, and, nice. Um, um, and so those those are fantastic. Um, who else am I reading? I'm sorry. What was the name? Say it. What What Sonali was the name Dev. again? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Who else am I reading? Oh, Melissa I'm Jenkins. Oh, I'm sorry. Saying. Melissa asked what your favorite book was for 2021. I'm just curious. Like, did you have a favorite Ooh. for 2021? Like for 2021? Oh my gosh. Or 2020, if you can. Or 2020. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, 20. It, it's only half a year, so it doesn't really count. Like, I have to year. consult my list, so I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Um, there's a few books I've mentioned along the way. I don't think I've settled on a favorite for okay. the year yet, mm -hmm. but right. I have to say that every book I finish, I really, really like because I made a decision a long time ago to that if a book just wasn't working for me, I would stop at, you know, like 15%. And because before, when I was younger, I used to really power through it, even if I didn't like it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I don't have the time. So right. mm -hmm. sometimes it's not the book. Sometimes it's my mood. So right. I go to it you know a few months later so basically everything i read generally i'm really enjoying um awesome. that's just, awesome yeah 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 i agree with beverly jenkins like you, i'm sure you have like all the favorites of, like... yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so nalini what is your do you have like a huge library with that's like filled with books or do you like downsize and would no <laughs> <laughs> We so, um, the books. <laughs> the first time I moved into a place that was mine um, was after I um, came back from Japan, really. I mean, obviously, I lived in my own place in Japan, but I, was, I knew I was going to be moving, so it wasn't permanent. So when I came back home, I finally got my own place that was permanently sort of mine. First thing I had built was bookshelves nice like right that's wall number bookshelves. one oh nice uh -huh. number two so, Carrie, is like the kitchen how, or the bathroom number one Carrie the has, so <laughs> nalini i don't know if you know you probably don't know but carrie but she got like a steal carrie tell her about your find that you oh, yeah. so carrie it became was, it was carrie became very high, popular like, because of I this i plowed my way through booktube that's how i kind of did it but i i found i because i try to always get a deal like i to pay full price for books, you're going to be so poor at the end of the day. So I was just going on Craigslist one day being like, is there any romances someone's going to give away or whatever? And this lady just puts up this ad saying like, I've got 1500 historical romance books for $50. And I'm like, this can't be real. I didn't think it was real. So I text her back or like, however you do Craigslist, not text her, but like DM her. Yeah. Or yeah. yeah. And sure enough, she had them all out on the driveway for me. I went with my husband. We went with two cars. It was like 50 boxes of books. And I gave her $50. I'm like, she just wanted to go get them to a good home. And I wanted them. So it was a good deal. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. So, mm -hmm. New authors, new books. Like, right. not like old, like vintage books. Like, they were like nice books. New but books. They looked she, like they were in great condition. They were in really good shape. She did mm -hmm. keep the cues. So she kept a set of Julia Quinn's, but, but to, to tomatoes, potatoes, you got to be happy with it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, those Julia Quinn's, I was just like, oh, and the Bridger James came out, but that's okay. I was and she has happy. every other author, but she's mad about the Julia Quinn's. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> but yes, mm -hmm. and then um, I did find Paranormals. And I think there was a set of yours in there, which I, heck yeah, I kept those. And so I've got a set of yours. Um, so wow, I well, bought original from you and then I also have a set of yours from secondhand. So I'm very happy about that too. <laughs> um, Alicia, you had some questions that you wanted to read. From I do. I, I do. A bunch of people were asking. So 
I am I'm fascinated with the guilt hunter because you're you're following one couple, right? Well, I mean, there's the other the, the other couples, but basically it's Raphael mm -hmm. and Elena. And I listened to five of them and read one for this, read, read physical one. With the audio, how much of a role do you play in like picking the narrator and all and, and the stuff that goes into the audio version? Because the audio for these was phenomenal. Right. Like just so good. amazingly mm -hmm. well done. So how much do you play in that? Um, well, that's really good to hear. I um, I get the choice of the original narrator. So oh, we've been very lucky that it's been the same narrator for the series. Mm -hmm. She's been available the whole way through, which I think really makes a difference mm -hmm. because I also listen to audio a lot. And so mm -hmm. I really don't like it when the narrator changes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So Especially if you don't know that narrator. Me, um, so it it's just, with an just audio stuff publisher. With what <laughs> um, mm -hmm. They sent me some auditions of uh, mm -hmm. the narrators, and um, so I just listen to the voice, and I try and pick someone who I think suits, um, you know, the series. Mm -hmm. And um, and then after that, to be honest, they take over and do all the production, and um, yeah. And I what I do sometimes get is I'll get a list of questions from the narrator about uh, pronunciation perhaps right. or mm -hmm. just a specific question that they have um but other than that um i leave them to it and you know i've been really happy with the audios uh, that have been produced and mm -hmm. if i do you know start getting and thankfully this has never happened uh, but you know if i suddenly started getting a whole bunch of complaints or something about a problem then i would definitely you know get into it and, and, and yeah sort it out but um mm -hmm. yeah it's a, it's a very professional team that deals mm -hmm. with it and i kind of feel like when someone's a professional i'm happy to to leave them to it you know, let to them do it, it. Yeah. yeah 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 so Estefania says congrats on your new york times wsj and zusa listings is that right it's usa today yeah, the USA yeah USA today. <laughs> thank you um, and Yay. she says, uh, will we learn more about Ivan Merkin? And oh, Payal is my favorite. She brings so much to the council. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yes. The McCants in general will be back because they're quite fascinating. And they've, um, they're quite interconnected as this book. I won't spoil it, but as this book points out, they're quite interconnected with all the ma other major players um, right. in the series. So, yeah. <laughs> And then we have the library addict is asking, I know you are a big, is that Jack? J-A-K fan? Have you gotten the upcoming Jane Castle? New Dust Bunny. Um, no. So um, so it's Jane and Krantz. Jack, mm -hmm. Jane Castle is her paranormal romance uh, mm -hmm. name. Um, okay. I love those books so much. Oh, my gosh. Um, she <laughs> is one of my all-time yeah. favorites in all her pen names. But... Um, and actually, she's another Q historical author, Amanda Quick. Amanda Quick. Yeah, Amanda, Amanda Quick. Quick. Um, I the haven't Qs. read the new one, but I could because we're at the same publisher. So generally, if I'm a bit cheeky and I yeah. email them and say, can I have this book early, they'll give <laughs> it to me. But sometimes so I actually nice. um, like to get the, the book edition, the print edition when it comes mm -hmm. out because I really like to... She's such a favorite. I like to like mm -hmm. read it like on a Sunday with my cup of tea and tell everybody else not to bother me and I just like, <laughs> read my books so and goes into my blanket. <laughs> right. So yeah, it's on pre-order and I can't wait to can't wait to get it. So I have a little question, real quick. Mm -hmm. So if you want a book, you could just call your agent and be like, hey, get me this book. And I'm like, oh, that would be so nice. I can't even tell you. Yeah. Yeah, like so. Uh, sometimes I ask my agent if it's if it's not a publisher that I know. Um, right. If it's my own publisher, I just ask my editor or the publicist. Um, and some I know a lot of authors at this point, so sometimes right. I just email them. And, can I have your book? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, can we exchange, Nalini? Because I know you're coming out with a book. I have a book. I want to mm -hmm. read your book. Carrie, Carrie, yeah. you don't need any more books, Carrie. No, no you're, you're, you're done. done. You're I'm done. Listening to audio at this point because I, I did. I listened to Nalini's audio, but I have her physical copy as well. So I'm like, yeah, there's, there's double things going on there. 
how do you keep your world separate? Because I know each series mm. is so long. Mm. Like, is it like four? You're on fourteen of this of this uh, guilt hunter, right? And are you on what is it on size changeling? Is it number? Um, well, so the size changeling was split into two seasons. So the first right. season is one to fifteen. Right. And then you can actually start the side changing on the second season if you if you kind of get scared by that huge <laughs> backlist. No, we're good. So, no, no, we're good. So I think uh, Last Guard was book five in the right. new season. Yeah, that mm -hmm. one just came out July twentieth, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So how do you keep the world separated? Because I feel like you have to like immerse yourself in these worlds. So how do you do that? I think it <laughs> helps um, because they're so different. You know, there's right. really no mm -hmm. crossover. And so mm -hmm. I don't have any sort of uh, feeling of I'm going to mix things up because they are so different. And, mm -hmm. and not just in terms of the the types of people that are in it, like archangels or shapeshifters. Um, it's the tone as well. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the Guild Hunter series is much darker. It's grittier. It's bloodier. Mm -hmm. Whereas right. the Sun oh, yeah. series mm -hmm. more has a family um, mm -hmm. heart to it, like this really warm... Um, right. Mm -hmm. heart to it and all these and it's about the pack and and so the, there's just so many differences between the two that when i switch it's a very clean switch right mm -hmm. um, okay for me it's, yeah but in terms of the details i do have to keep very good um notes right. and i i sort of had to learn this as i started because the side changing series was the first series i wrote and kind of figured it out as i went along like what i needed to mm -hmm. keep notes on and now um, my sister, Ashwini, who is my assistant, <laughs> she <laughs> also so in the books. And I was also in the books. Sounds very familiar. <laughs> yes. I stole her name. No. Um, no, she was complaining to me one day that nobody in a book has ever had her name that she's read, right? She's a big reader. So I'm like, hello, writer sitting right next to you. So I actually put her in the book and didn't tell her until... Um, until she read it, and then I was like, surprise! <laughs> <laughs> but but um, she's, she's, she's lucky she has a nice sister that made her an angel, and you didn't, like, all of a sudden bring some, like, little demons or devils in there and then <laughs> make her up to Queenie. Because if, if I was a writer, I would totally do that to my sister. I would not make her an angel at all. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it's, it's, it's been good. Um, I just, I love the character, but obviously the character, um, you know, the hunter is very different from my sister, but just the name, mm -hmm. you know, it's really mm -hmm. unusual to see that name into, in a book. And so it's fun. Uh, it was fun to do. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, she keeps really good records for me um, for details now. We, we call it the wiki, Guild Hunter wiki. Mm -hmm. um, right. mm -hmm. um, and it's just private because it needs, there's a lot of cross-referencing character yeah. details, but a lot mm -hmm. of it is in my head. Like I, I carry these characters in my head, but so all the information is to double check. So I, after I've written mm -hmm. the book, basically we go through and we double check all of the minor, minor, minor details. And I'm the kind of personality that even if I know, I absolutely know this is correct. I will still go back and check again. Yeah. Right. Right. Because what's the out material. there, it's out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So because because you don't want, you don't want one of your readers to say, mm, Nalini, you said he had a black shirt. Now all of a sudden on page 68, it's like a gray. All right. <laughs> oh yeah. People will come um, for you. They I was would. Say, there is one mistake I made in one edition. It was a hardcover edition, um, and I don't know how this slipped through, but it did. Um, and a scar moved from, I think, the left side to the right side. Oh. Um, and oh. a reader picked it up and emailed me, and I was like. Oh, and then I, oh, I was like, okay, this is the old collector's edition because we fixed it right. in the paperback. Um, <sighs> so the paperback and the ebook got fixed. Um, but the hardcover, so the people who have the hardcover are the only people who have the, the copy. So one of the kind. You know, those are going to be worth so much more money now because it's yeah. like the, the penny that's like misprinted and it's like now those pennies are worth a million dollars. Yeah. That's what these books are going to be. Like, find mm -hmm. the Nalini <laughs> special. You know? If you're out there and you have a hard a hardcover Nalini book that has the scar on the opposite side of the page. <laughs> there are, there are like that. That's, it. that's all there is to it. I have um, I have a question. You were talking about characters. Do you have like a favorite character in the Guild Hunter series that you've written or 
it's to come, their book to come. I was just curious. Mm. About it. Oh, uh, I I can never answer this question because I love my characters so much. They're like friends to me, and like I couldn't pick my, you know, my my favorite friends. Like I couldn't pick my B favorite. So mm -hmm. I always said they're all my favorite. <laughs> oh, on, you can't. That's like oh, I love. No, them. you can't do that. Oh, the same. Yeah. No. I would do it. It's true. I love true. all my children. I can't pick a job. They're exactly. all my favorites. Exactly. We love them all the same, but there's one you like to spend more time with. <laughs> yes. which, okay, here's one. Which one you wrote? Which one was the easiest to write? Which one just flowed out and mm. like whoosh? It just came to the page. Raphael. Oh man. You know this. Really trick <laughs> questions because I I get really obsessed as a writer when I'm writing. Right. So I'm like super mm -hmm. obsessed with the character I'm writing about, mm -hmm. and um. I remember writing the first book, Angel's Blood, and I was completely obsessed, like just, right, you know, and um, I feel the same way about Archangel's Light, which I, you know, which mm. is the one that's coming out in October. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, yeah, don't ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> We'll do overall series. So either Guilt Hunters or what is, I forget. Sorry, names allude to Side changing. Side changing. Thank you. I'm sorry. Names, they just go out the window for me. You know, I, um, I started, what was I going to say? Oh, I can't answer that either because they're so different. Both are babies. Yeah, yeah they're so I different. Know. I think That's fine. Just... Yeah, I know. We were just seeing, like, in case you had a, you know, and it's funny, too, because, like, I feel like when you're writing in the moment, you'd be like, oh, I like this one better. But then you, when you're writing the other one, you're like, oh, I like this one better. Exactly. Or, oh, That's I can have this one kill that one because I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. this one anymore. You, so. you mentioned, yeah. though, you never, you're never going to do, like, a crossover book, right? Like, I thought you'd mentioned that. Ooh. That's not ever going to happen for that this be, two series. Okay. No. Okay. It's um, just a, yeah. it's just different worlds, and um, right. the, mm -hmm. the side changing series is technically slightly futuristic, so it's set in two thousand and eighty, um, okay. two thousand seventy nine when it starts. Right. So it's not, it's. I mean, if anyone hasn't read it, it's not heavily futuristic. It, it's very mm -hmm. sort of. I, I was trying to think very sort of, like where we would actually be as opposed yeah. to flying mm -hmm. cars kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Right. Um, right. Right. Real, yeah, realist. So this mm -hmm. is two completely separate. Yeah. Right. Do you do yeah. a lot of research for your books? Yeah, I do research about stuff that's real. For example, I do research about the wings and mm -hmm. how wing structure works. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why you have words like primary feathers, mm -hmm. you know, in the books. And um, I know about the muscle strength you would need. And actually, then I make decisions as an author about. Um, obviously I'm making authorial decisions so that the, the structure they have in their bodies is not necessarily what, for example, a winged, uh, real world creature would have, but I know right. I have the knowledge, um, mm -hmm. the amount of strength it takes to, you know, to go aloft with your right. body weight. Yeah. But, right. Uh, right. Yeah, and well, hearing how Elena's like slowly becoming she's like slowly. Yeah. She's doing that vertical takeoff, but she's like almost <laughs> herself because she's still so weak and all that. I think that was really interesting too that you thought about those little mm -hmm. creative uh, aspects of that. It's not all of a sudden you just change like that. Not for no, the vampires and not for the angels. Like no, it's a process. Dimitri changing honor. Like it's taking a while. That process is taking a while. The angel. Mm -hmm. Is taking a while. I thought that was really interesting too. Mm -hmm. I like that you didn't just make it like an overnight thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that was part of like um, what inspired me to write the series. And one of the things that inspired me was I was reading a lot of books with immortals or immortal characters. And I felt like they acted very human. It's like if you live a thousand years, are you necessarily going to be human or mm. are you going to be inhuman? You know? Right. Mm -hmm. Because of mm -hmm. the passage of time and how many people you've seen die over the years right. Right? right so that emotion will be taken out yeah, right exactly and so it works in reverse too with elena because she is she is human right and she's been thrust into this whole new existence and so it's mm -hmm. not going to be like okay i just accept this now it's it's a it's a struggle for her awesome. because, you know, mm -hmm. she's, she's always aware that like her best friend is not immortal yeah right. mm -hmm. there's gonna probably come a time that she's know, gonna she, be without her 
she's going to be just yeah. a memory, you know? Mm-hmm. And so that's really sad. And I like, I like the realism of right. that kind of thing because even though mm-hmm. it's like a fantastical series with angels and vampires, I feel like it has a very real heart to it. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And these are like real emotions that people would feel. Like how would you feel if you became mm-hmm. an immortal but the rest of your family didn't? Right. It was just, you know, it's like. Nalini, you have to pitch this to Netflix because this would be a bomb show on it. Favorite part of Just that whole thing, that whole spiel that you just gave could make, could give you like an easy like nine seasons. Right. Yeah. Well, actually, it's funny. There's actually people in Hollywood that love the series. And, um, but the, the problem is maybe in the future, this will not be a problem, is the cost of wings. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, one time I was told that, like, for what they spend or what they budget for most yeah. television series, I would get, like, one wing per episode. <laughs> oh. <laughs> really? Even if they're, like, um, computer generated, like, even if they're not, like, physical wings. I think that the technology is getting to the point where it's going to be a possibility to do right. that in a realistic way. Um, mm-hmm. and so, yeah, I have my fingers crossed because... Um, you know, like the Bridgertons, for example, that was, I don't know how long that series was out before it was made into a television series. So, a like while. Years. Or like, like 25 while. years. Like, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. long. 90s, 80s? Yeah. Yeah. So like 20 something years. In the future. Right. I'm not yeah. going to lie, though. One of my favorite parts was when she, what was it? Raphael push, push Elena off the cliff. Like, here you go. Like, that was. That Why? Why? Was- I, I can't do this. You're going to have to push me. You're going to have to push me because I cannot do this. I thought mm-hmm. that was genius. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was kind of like what you would be like. Right. Like, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to just jump off a cliff. Heck no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite funny because a few years later, so I wrote that a while ago, but a few, just like recently, I think three years ago, I, um, I did this thing with my friend. So there's this cave called the Lost World Cave in New Zealand and you can rappel down into it i think right. you guys oh, call rappelling something else um is it um, rappelling skydiving it's the uh, one with the rope um you're on a kite spelunking or something not zip lining and not no, no, zip no. lines pa- yeah right yeah like, uh, with the rope yeah no we it's just, you're attached on a rope and you go down but to mm-hmm. get oh. down into it you've got to jump off a platform into this into nothing it's just like hundred meters of air, and um, bungee so jumping? like bungee jumping, bungee jumping, kind of no, because you're you have a bungee down. and you're jumping it's off like, down. Off like a, like <laughs> I, a I know bridge word, or something. It'll, it'll come to me after, but, um, <laughs> but like that feeling of we're like okay, we're just the instructor was like okay, now put your toes on the edge of the platform. Oh right. no! Oh, oh no! no. Have to and then go. they push, <laughs> and then we're like, oh can we back out of this now? He's like, no. <laughs> right. I couldn't do it. It was so mm-hmm. much fun. It was so much fun. But that moment that I could feel like, Elena, this is what she would have felt like. That moment right. where you're like, okay, can mm-hmm. you just push? Oh, everybody says it's repelling. It Everyone. is repelling. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I just, I love that scene too, to be honest. I well, Alicia just, Alicia, didn't you just like climb a glacier or something? Didn't you just do something? Yeah. Just like, yeah, we do we do stupid things like that all the time. Yeah, we're, like, we're, we're, I'm like, no, my vacation's on a beach, like tropical. No, 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 no. I'm, not, no, no. I'm not working no, no. on my vacation. No, 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 no. We we hike we, like 18 we, miles. We, we, we're in a glacier. Yeah, it's fine. It's all fine. I survived. Did it's things fine. like that when I was younger. Now that I'm older, I'm like, I think things a little bit more through. We did paragliding or something where you run off the cliff and there oh, it's just that like fun. the kite behind you. And you're like yeah. literally run off the cliff. Yeah. I did that, what, two I, decades ago? <laughs> Nalina, Nalini, I'm sorry. Would you like to talk about the newest uh, book that yes. just came out, The Last Guard from the Psy Changeling? Would you like to give a little? Um, yeah. Well, what can I tell you? It's, um, it's two really interesting characters that I love. And they had a connection as children. They were not quite a bad situation uh, as children. And then they were separated. And so for more than 20 years, they've um, they've never forgotten each other. But one of them, Kanto, he ended up in the arms of like this family that really cherished who he was and um, protected him. And kind of, they're this ruthless, ruthless family, right? Mm-hmm. Like they're, they're like, they're like the mafia. 
<laughs> Except the family is everything, you know? Mm-hmm. They're like, I will cut you if you hurt my family kind of people. So, um, so that sounds like something Alicia would amazing. like. <laughs> you know, like that. <laughs> you know, that's then, my plan. Um, and then Pyle, but Pyle, the, the heroine, she ended up in the opposite. She ended up with a family that doesn't value her and mm-hmm. really only took her back because another heir died. So she's kind of like the backup heir. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, like so the spare? The, mm-hmm. the spare, you know, yeah. right. she was kind of brought in like that. And then she's got this brother who's basically a psychopath, but he puts on this really nice front where he's, you know, he's handsome and everyone thinks he's really um, smart, and, but he, he is a psycho in the background. Mm. You know, he's the reason for a lot of the... How do you come up? <laughs> how does your mind work that you can just like... I know. You, like you, a you. puzzle piece, like, I'm going to make this happen and then this is just going to be off, like, somehow. And then I'm going to... Like, I want to see your creative process. Like, do you, like, map this out? Do you have, like, a vision board? Like, it just sounds so... <laughs> I feel like it, it just sounds comes amazing. To you no, it does. It sounds amazing. That like out. that's just so cool. Like, do you? How do you plan out your books? Do they just come to you? Like you're just sitting there and like, oh, this one's gonna be a psycho, and this is. Or do you like? Do you think about the end first, and then put? I all the always know together? the um, answer to the question. So with the side changing series, or even the Guild Hunter series, there's an overarching type of question or plot point right. and I always think about the ending for that because I think it's really unfair to readers to have a series that doesn't have the climax point mm-hmm. and right. um, so that's why the side changing series was in two seasons because there was a climax point um, we hit it and originally I thought that's where the series would end and then mm-hmm. once we hit that point I realized oh actually we need to know what happens next now so now right. we're in we're in the second act, right? So can you explain the seasons? Because I'm I'm gonna start the side change link. Right. Series. I have not done I the side change link. Understand either. like the seasons. Like what yeah, that means. So the seasons, how I think of it is like um how do I explain this without spoiling it for you? So if you think of a season of television, right? Like uh-huh. someone say it's a quest or something. And so in one season they're gonna either they're gonna finish the quest, right? Uh-huh. And then have an answer to their question. But maybe at the end of their quest what they find actually raises all new possibilities. So mm. this is what happens with basically the Sci Changing series. You start with Silence, which is this program the Sci have conditioned themselves um, under. So the Sci have all these psychic abilities, like true telepathy, telekinesis, they're really, really powerful, wow. but it drives mm-hmm. them insane. So mm. they decided a mm-hmm. hundred years ago that one way to deal with it is just to condition emotion out of themselves. They said, well, if we can't feel, if we're not passionate, we're not having all this emotional energy in our brains, it will stop us. It will make us more likely to be sane. And really all that's done actually is made the sociopaths and the psychopaths at the top of um, the society, right? Because they are the people who don't feel anything or don't care. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And so that question, like um, if, if it drove you insane, what would you do to survive? That begins the series. And so at the end of the season, um, they have a decision point, you know, of, of mm-hmm. I don't want to spoil it, but yeah. So right. that is the question and you get an answer to that question um, mm-hmm. in that first season. And then something else happens and then it's like, okay, well, what do we go from this point? And that begins the second season. So I hope you. Well, it's you like getting it, a yeah. whole other series of Game of Thrones. It's just like, bam, <laughs> <Yes>. right? <laughs> what they like, what they yeah. All right, that sounds yeah. great. All right, so I'm totally intrigued to start that series, man. Totally intrigued. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, and, okay, so you're you just seem like such a sweet individual, so kind. Well, like you just look. I know. And you, like you, you so read sweet. your books and like spines are being ripped out. Somebody yes. <laughs> out of the nose. I'm like, how does she? come up with that twist it doesn't work it doesn't work well, well the sisters personality. were genius that sisters that fight when they were going at it and like destroying the city and stuff and like what she had yeah but i'm talking like, about the gore like somebody's head was ripped off on one side and the body was over there like where does she get this like she's i can't tell you i can't tell I love you it, it just you know, a lot of writers, it's, there's a lot of weird stuff happening in our brains. So, um, 
It's she's, yeah, let, she's let like secret Nalini by night. She comes out, she's like dressed in leather. <laughs> well, I'm whip, curious, and she's though. Like, <laughs> we love it. I'm curious yeah. though, do you have scenes like written in a notebook? See, like, would this work for this series, or do you hold like, are there certain scenes that you think of and you're like, I don't know if I want to implement this in this book right now, or like, is there a special notebook somewhere where you have notes? for like future books or things like that. I'm curious. Yeah, I do. I do. But it generally, um, it's very connected to character. So I always okay. know which series it's going to go in. Right. But, mm -hmm. um, uh, but I do write scenes ahead of time. So I, I do see things not always in chronological order. Right. So then I just write it. I just write it and I keep it in a folder um, on my computer or I have a, a physical folder as well. And I just um, keep it until it's time. So one sort of super famous example in the Sai Changing series is, um, so Caleb is a character you'll meet in book two. Okay. And I won't tell you too much about him, but um, he is just, he's bad. He's a big bad. <laughs> okay, okay, so he's not a... <laughs> well, he's gray, shall we say. He's very okay, gray. He's... Okay, I get mm -hmm. it, I get it. Um, mm -hmm. And I wrote a scene... Um, that is very important in terms of Caleb's character. I wrote that um, when I wrote book two, but it didn't come up in the series until book mm -hmm. 12. So interesting. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. pay attention okay. to book two when you read book two. Remember everything <laughs> that happens in book highlight. I'm gonna, I'm notes, okay, I, I also 12, want to say like, the sex it. scenes, <laughs> Nalini, the sex scenes were super steamy. <laughs> I wasn't expecting Archangels to be so smutty, so I love that. that yeah, was I love the dancing. Perfect. The dancing. Yep. Mm -hmm. So good. So good. And what else was I going to say? The sex scenes and, uh, darn it. I love it. book. Dimitri and I love them. Oh, so I loved how you, um, how almost everybody had like a really bad past experience. Like something right. really oh, bad yeah. happened to them. Horrible. Right. <laughs> We're like honor, horrible. Hello. Oh my gosh. And like even before you like know know what happened, like then when you find out what happened, it's like, oh my god, this poor girl. Like, wow. And then here's Nalini looking so like With their little teacup. With their like... <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. And after this is over, you know, I put on my sunglasses and <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, and take out my knives and yeah, yeah. start at it. And it, it just, it's difficult to explain, but it's like, this is, that is what the series is. You know, there's a lot of darkness in the history mm -hmm. of the people and right. the world. And so it, it's <clears throat> just part of how that series came to me. Even at mm -hmm. the very beginning, when I really thought it was going to be one book, I, like I seriously thought it was Angel's Blood was going to be one book. Mm -hmm. And I saw Elena's history, you know, what happened with her family and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and it was super dark. And I was kind of like, whoa, but I just went with it. And I think that is, it is what it is. Um, mm -hmm. And I just have to be really honest to it. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and sometimes the scenes are difficult to write because they are so traumatic. Like yeah. Dimitri's book, it was yeah. difficult. It was really well, difficult. That was my favorite book. I think that was, I think <laughs> Dimitri's book might have been my favorite book. I would love Dimitri. Mm -hmm. I, I cried. I cried three different times in that book. Oh. It was so sad. Well, that <laughs> ending was genius. It was genius. Like yeah. if you haven't heard that before, which I'm assuming you have, that ending was genius. With yeah, with her really, and I don't want to spoil it. it. I'm hopefully everybody in here has read at least the first six books, <laughs> so you guys know. Like, but that mm -hmm. ending was bomb, though. It was so good. Yeah, yeah, it's like I get really invested in the books, and so I am mm -hmm. crying, like sitting there, like sobbing my heart out. <laughs> and sometimes I have to take breaks, but then I think I should feel really invested. Like, if I'm not invested, will the reader be invested? Mm -hmm. um, right. You know, will Will they feel the emotion? So. Yeah, I really dig deep, and even if it's uncomfortable to write or just really heartbreaking to write, I just you know I have to be true to these characters um, and to the story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have yeah. one last question from Natasha. She couldn't be here today. It's her birthday, so I think her oh, family birthday. was doing something. But she did send some questions. I'm gonna. We kind of touched on a couple of them, but this one I thought was pretty interesting. So. Um, do you have a special ritual you do whenever you complete a book or before you start a book? Um, I suppose, 
this is not a very exciting ritual. Well, it is for me. I like it. <laughs> I finish a book. So, like, my desk is like a chaos by the time I finish a book. There's notebooks everywhere. There's folders everywhere. There's pens, papers, post-its. It's just insanity. And so after I finish a book, quite often I'll take a day and I literally tidy my desk. And that sounds really, like... <laughs> Not very exciting, but it's Melanie, I'm thinking good. you're gonna say you you eat a whole pint of ice cream, like yeah. pops of champagne. <laughs> something exciting. Come on, girl. I'm not dancing and music. But I think it's just that um, I'm actually quite exhausted at the end of right. finishing yeah. the book, and so it's like a nice kind of steady, calm kind of thing to do. Um, and yeah, usually you know uh, there's chocolate involved. I mean, of course. how long does it take you to finish a book? It depends on the book, but I usually say four to six months as like a oh, wow. general guideline. Okay. But it's pretty quick. Since I'm writing series, I quite often I'll have my notes about a book quite a ways back, you know, so yeah. I already have mm -hmm. notes for um, like the next book when right. I'm working on it. So there's a long period, but in terms mm -hmm. of when I'm sitting down intensively working on the book, four to six months. Wow. Um, and that's with editing and everything or is that? No, that's um, so that's me turning in the book, and okay. then the edits come in over the next six months. So there'll be copy edits, um, revisions, proofs. Um, so that comes in as I'm writing. Usually, I'm writing a the book in a different series, and then it's coming in in between there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm sorry. I have to ask one more question. So. <laughs> no, go ahead. I saw that you were a lawyer and a librarian, right? Yes. And you worked in a chocolate factory, and Carrie, Carrie's grandpa owns the Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory. Oh, so yes. Of, yes, yes. So out of your jobs, uh, no, we're not talking author because obviously that one's like the best. But out of the other jobs, the lawyer, the teacher, and working at the candy factory, which one was your favorite? Candy factory. Ooh, which was, <laughs> I have to say, it was my favorite for a while until I got sick of candy. Right, oh. you don't eat it anymore. You literally look at it and you're like, we give it to everybody else. But exactly. Every so once in a while, really you have a piece, but not <laughs> You actually lose weight, maybe, because you're running around trying to make it all. Yeah, like, I used to love, like, um, the hard caramels. And, yeah. But then they, they're, like, really cutting at the this candy place. They just let you eat the candy. And then after a while, you're like, no, I can't even look at it. <laughs> Stop giving it to me. <laughs> I'm smelling like caramel after every day. And just matter how often you shower, you still smell like caramel. Yeah. I think it took me like a year afterwards until I could eat like all the candy again. Um, but I mean, I have to say that was a job I had at university. So I was a university right. student and that was my part-time job that I had. Um, mm -hmm. I loved it. But in terms of... Um, my favorite. I really loved working at the library, actually. Oh, that would be fun. Books, you know, yeah, and yeah. all the other that would be favorite. Just, mm -hmm. just really cool mm -hmm. people and all doing mm -hmm. such fascinating things. Like um, there were a couple that worked there. They were like fine artists. Like they've had exhibitions and stuff. There was like a rock Ooh. musician who also worked at the library. And then just the librarians who were like, um, so most of us were library assistants, right? So we're not trained right. librarians. But then there were the, like the trained librarians who were like, um, you know, there for 10 years and just really knew the system inside out and could tell you everything about books and mm -hmm. just amazing people. And any mostly all the people that come to the library are also really cool people. So um, it was just a really nice place to go to work and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, were, awesome. lawyer is probably like the most stressful one mm -hmm. out of all of them, right? Like, yeah, like I love the <laughs> People like being sued or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But actually working in a firm is, I worked in a big commercial firm, so oh, it was okay. super mm. stressful. Mm. And just everyone was stressed all the time. So then oh, they yeah. were stressed at you. And so it was just this cycle mm -hmm. of stress. And um, <laughs> I, I enjoyed it in terms of the people I was surrounded by, but um, right. it wasn't the right place for me. And mm -hmm. um, so You're too creative was, for that. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It just wasn't the right fit. But right. um yeah, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, stress, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need, like, mm -hmm. the most relaxed person in the world to be lawyers, because it's literally, like, a high-strung person mm -hmm. like myself. It's a no-go. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Well, Nalini, mm-hmm. I want to thank you for coming on here and chatting with us. It's mm-hmm. been a pleasure and an honor to have you join us. Um, we love the books. I, like I said, I'm going to continue. I want to finish the Archangels, but I, I think I might also put my foot into Side Changeling right. at the mm-hmm. same time. I might do like one and one. Yeah. Because I really want to, I want to, yeah. I want to read Caleb's book. So I know I got to do one <laughs> and then two, mm-hmm. take my notes. And uh, I just want to thank you guys. If you have not finished the series, jump on. As you can tell, Nalini is extremely talented, most multifaceted, highly intelligent, um, and has all these different aspects of her personality that she throws into these books like magic. So thank you for joining us. Everybody. And then her new book's tonight. coming out in October. Yep, October, our day of light. Our, yep. Bluebell is coming out. Bluebell! <laughs> I am Bluebell. so excited. I can't wait. I yeah. I am like dying for this one. I just think it, it looks fantastic. I'm Every so excited. Every time I see Bluebell, I'm like, Bluebell's coming. He's coming. <laughs> <laughs> No, this was really fun. Um, I love chatting with you all. And um, yeah, we could keep doing this forever. <laughs> yes, anytime. You let us know. We do the next six books. Nalini, I'm going to shoot you an email. You tell me when you're available. We'll not we'll knock them out. <laughs> I can't wait. We had a blast. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.